Um, welcome everyone and thanks so much for joining us today for this um, for this um, tech demo with a good CRM. My name is Phil Loftas. I am the tech champion here at the DCN for CRM and ticketing and I'm going to be hosting today's presentation and demo from good CRM. Um, we're very excited to be presenting this press session as part of our new series um, that we're trialing of tech demos and um, where we're engaging tech companies to come and give a short presentation and a demo about how their product is relevant to the arts and culture sector. These sessions aren't necessarily about promoting particular products, but designed to give arts and cultural organisations like yourselves insight into the types of tools that are available to help and to give insight on how they might benefit you. Um, but before we begin, let me do a little, little bit of housekeeping. Today's session is scheduled to last for um, 30 minutes, including a question and answer. Um, you are able to turn on automatic closed captioning by clicking the CC button on the bottom right of your screen and turning subtitles on. Um, if I can ask you to keep your mics off throughout the presentation, um, you are allowed to keep your cameras on, but be aware that you can be seen by other participants and we're also recording today's session, so your video might get captured. Um, we also encourage you to ask questions throughout using the chat function and I will collect them and ask them to Tom at the end of the session. And this session is going to be recorded and hosted on our website alongside any spot materials and contact details for Good CRM. So without any further ado, I'm very pleased to introduce Tom from Good CRM, um, who's going to be taking today's session. And I'm going to hand over to him now so he can introduce himself and show you around Good CRM. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us. Um, I'm Tom Cowell, uh, I'm the founder of Good CRM, um, and I'm going to quickly share my screen for you uh, and tell you a little bit more about the system. Um, there we go. Um, okay, so Good CRM is a contact relationship management system uh, for people who do good. Um, around 90% of our clients are in arts, heritage and culture, and we operate as a social enterprise, so we reinvest uh, our surplus into the platform. Um, the system has really been created in close collaboration with our clients, uh, so many of the features have actually been commissioned by our clients, and we even have what we call pledge schemes, uh, where groups of clients can pool their resources to commission new functionality and keep costs to a minimum. So talking about cost, um, what does Good CRM cost? It starts at 18 pounds per month for a single user on our micro account and the pro account starts at 120 pounds per month, which includes uh, five users. So that equates to 24 pounds per user per month. Uh, do head over to the resources section for today's session uh, where you can request a full brochure with a, a full breakdown of all of the differences between our plans and our pricing and so on and so forth. So I want to talk a little bit about why people might want a CRM. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is organizational memory. So organizational memory, we're talking about all of that valuable information uh, that we collect about our organization, its contacts and activities. And um, these data often sit in silos, so spreadsheets, inboxes, software, and a lot of it uh, gets carried around in people's heads as well. Um, and there tends to be lots of different versions of the same data, some of it's out of date, uh, and this data is not connected. And that information that gets carried around in people's heads is often hard to access if someone's off ill and often leaves the organisation with that person as well. And I think we're all guilty of this to some extent, um, uh, but we can fix it. And a CRM centralises this data and it makes it um, available to the people in our organization as a, a single source of truth with all of the latest information in one place. So Good CRM can capture information from a variety of sources. We can import spreadsheets, we can upload files. Um, that information we carry around in our heads, we can uh, uh, add to the CRM and we can capture various things automatically uh, from inboxes, from uh, software, uh, donations, events, that kind of thing. I also want to talk about capacity within organizations and Good CRM 
very much builds capacity within, within organizations. And when we think about uh, how we spend our time in our organization, we probably like to think about our impact. Uh, we think about the people that our work benefits and the mission that we deliver. But a lot of the work we do is actually concerned with proving our impact to uh, funders, boards, regulatory bodies, and so on. And that's really important work. But the more time we spend accounting for our impact, the less impact we have, uh, because you know, we've, we've only got so much time and so much resource. Um, so we like to say that data collection should be a consequence of the work that you do, not the work uh, itself. And so if we collect data automatically just by doing our jobs, then we can optimize the way we use our capacity uh, and we can spend less time on accountability, admin and more time delivering on our mission. So Bitterum helps to build capacity, as I've said, and one of the ways it can do that is through workflows. So workflows embed processes into your CRM. Um, and that means that things that might require lots of manual steps, like maybe we add a form to our website and then that data goes into a spreadsheet and then we have to go through that spreadsheet and a lot of emails back and forth and so on. Um, we, can, we can capture that kind of thing into a workflow. So take this example, we can add a form to our website. Uh, when, when someone completes that form, an email notification goes to a project manager who then maybe reviews that information and assesses whether uh, this person is suitable for the thing we're offering. And if they're not, we maybe send them a nice polite email explaining why or giving them advice on other things we offer. Um, and if they are, perhaps we ask them for some more information. Maybe they need to upload some files or some uh, can complete some more steps. And so really, this is the kind of thing that we can enshrine within uh, a workflow in good CRM. Okay, so I just want to talk about some of the more general functionality in the CRM as well now. Um, and we cover lots of things in the CRM, so contacts and relationships, events and participation, monitoring and evaluation, and fundraising, particularly around individual giving and memberships. We also have lots of flexible uh, tools within the system to store information about grant management processes and all kinds of things like that, or grant application processes, I should say. So um, every contact, each person or organization in the CRM has their own profile, and we can tag our contacts by type, and we can add any number of tags throughout the system to classify our data. So interests, skills, aims and objectives, themes, whatever it might be. And each contact has a relationship timeline as well. So this shows key moments in our relationship with that contact. And that can include rich notes that we've added manually to people's uh, timelines, but it can also be things we capture automatically, such as emails and newsletters received, uh, donations made, events attended, uh, and that kind of thing. The system's completely configurable uh, out of the box. So uh, you can, uh, you don't have to keep coming back to us to make changes, you can make those changes yourself. So for example, you can add um, any number of custom fields for the various attributes uh, around your people, organizations, programs, projects, events, etc. Uh, and those can be, you know, text fields or checkboxes, drop down lists, uh, file uploads, image uploads, uh, lots of different types of attributes that we can add to our data. And as mentioned, we can actually extend the CRM for you through things like those workflows. Uh, and this, you can actually uh, commission new features and, and, and integrations as well. So um, we hope that that means that the, the system can adapt and grow with you and your organization over time. OK, so I want to talk about a particular type of custom field within the system, one that I get a bit geeky about, so I do apologize in advance. Um, and that is a connection field. So when we think about relationships within CRM, we can also think as well as the relationships with our contacts and organizations that we're in touch with, we can also think about how the data within our system is related, how, uh, how our activity links to contacts and so on. So we can define and capture relationships within the CRM using connection fields. So let's take uh, a project that we might want to recall in our CRM. Uh, perhaps we have funders uh, that are uh, funding that project. Maybe we have partners that are helping us to deliver this project as well. So we can create connection fields called funders and partners 
to connect organisations to the project. Maybe the project has some events, maybe some workshops, and those workshops will have participants and maybe a session leader. So we can use these connection fields within Good CRM to capture all of this kind of information. So if we want to look up who is running the workshop next week, that's very easy. We can go and find out who the session leader is. Um, if we want to list all of the people who participated in workshops funded by the Arts Council, we want to understand how they're made up in terms of gender, ethnicity, and other protected characteristics. And that becomes a moment's work as well. And that's something I'm going to explore with you now within the system. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is Good CRM. We can customize the look and feel of Good CRM. Um, it's a cloud-based platform, so you can access it anywhere you have an internet connection. Uh, let's go ahead and log in. When we first log in, we can see our dashboard that allows us to pick up from where we left off. Let's just have a quick look at some of the key sections. We have our people here. Uh, we can click onto any of our contact profiles, view all of that rich profile information, the person type tags, um, all of the uh, various attributes that we store. And yes, dogs are people too. Um, over on the right hand in the middle, I should say, um, we have that relationship timeline so we can have a look back at all those key things that have happened with our contact. Um, we then have a similar section for organisations. We have a dashboard for our memberships if uh, we have memberships installed. We have a similar dashboard for our uh, donations section. We have our programs, projects and events section. And we have record forms, which is a great catch-all place to store all kinds of information that you want to capture in your CRM. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at uh, an example that we just spoke about with those connection fields. And when we think about um, getting data out of Good CRM, one of the things we can do to classify our data is use tags. Let's think of a scenario where we work with lots of uh, different partners to deliver projects. And maybe we want to be able to get a list of our project partners. So those are organisations. And as you can see here, I've tagged various of my organisations as project partner. Uh, and if I want to go ahead and make changes, I can go into an organisation's profile, I can edit, and I can come to my organization type tag field at the top here and choose uh, a different tag. Uh, and so when we go ahead and save, we'll see that this organization is now tagged as a project partner. I can also come over to my tools and settings and come to my segments tool. And what we're going to do here is find a list of those organizations that are tagged as a partner. So I can add a segment, I can call this Project Partners, and I can choose the type of data I'm interested in, in this case, organizations. So when we build segments, we use rules to or criteria to narrow down on the information we want. And those criteria can use any of the custom fields that we have set up in the system. I'm going to use this organization type tag field that we just edited in the DCNs profile. So I'm going to look for organizations where organization type has any of, and then I can choose from my various organization type tags. I'm going to choose project partner, and that now gives me a list of all of these project partners. So tags can be a really useful way to classify any of the information within our system. Okay, now the example I'm going through today is quite specific, um, so I am looking at a very particular part of the system, so um, do bear that in mind. What I want to think about now is when we're looking at lists like this, and these lists can be exported to spreadsheets, we can look at statistics around these lists and all sorts of things, using tags is a bit one-dimensional. It's a bit of a blunt tool. So, for example, if we wanted to get not just a list of all of the project partners we've ever worked with, but we want to look at a list of, say, project partners who've worked with us on projects in the current year or in the previous year, then just having a single project partner tag doesn't help us with that. 
Similarly, if we wanted to find all the project partners who worked with us on uh, uh, with a particular funder, then um, we're going to have to uh, introduce new tags there as well. So I talked about connection fields in GoodTRM and how we can use those connection fields. And I think that this is a great example of where they come into play. So if we go over to our uh, programs, projects and events section and we come into our Earth Projects program, uh, within here we have information about our various projects and we can click into a project um, and we can edit the project's information. Now at the moment I've only got a few fields, uh, the project name, an image, the start and end date. So what I'd like to do is connect my partners and funders to this project. So to do that I'm going to introduce some new custom fields to the system. So I'm going to come over to my tools and settings menu and I'm going to scroll down to custom fields and this is where we can add those new attributes to the system and I'm going to go to the project section and I'm going to add a couple of new connection fields here. I'm going to call one funders and I'm going to also create one for partners as well. So partners and funders are both organizations. So now just by adding those new fields, when I come to edit a project, I will have those options. So let's go back to our Earth Project 2021. We're going to edit. And now we have these two new fields, funders and partners. So let's uh, go and choose some funders. Maybe it was Arts Council England and Esme that funded this particular project. And who did we deliver this project with? So we maybe worked with, let's say, Tesla and uh, Ecotricity. So we can search for any of the organizations in the system and connect them to our project. OK, and now we can see we have funders and partners listed for that project. So we have that connectivity. Again, we can use this now in our segments. So Let's come back over to Tools and Settings, back to the Set Segments tool. And now we can say, OK, I want to find all of the projects from 2021, for example. Projects 2021. And we're going to choose Projects. And I'm going to add that criteria again. And this time I'm interested in when this project started. So I'm going to use the Start Date custom field and say where that date is in between the 1st of the 1st, 2021, and the 31st of the 12th, 2021. So now we have a list of all the projects that we did within 2021. So how do we find the project partners involved in these projects? Well, we can use that connection field, that partner, connection field again. So I'm going to create a new segment and call this Project Partners 2021 and those partners are organizations. And this time I'm going to search in the field here for partner to find that Project Partners uh, connection field that connects our partner organizations to our projects. So searching for organizations where they were project partners and I'm going to choose to look in the existing segment that we've just created, Projects 2021. So in other words, find all the people that were project partners in 2021 projects. And when we look at the results, we can see the two partners that we connected to that event. Now, in the true spirit of Blue Peter, here's one I created earlier. So in, uh, in this particular system here, in my projects, I've connected up all of my projects to funders and to partners. And if we come over to our segments, I've created segments to find all of the partners across various different years. And so if we have a look at the list of partners for 2021, for example, um, here is Tesla. And what we can see here is that we've added these badges on so Tesla, because they were partners in 2019, 20 and 21, have badges. 
and those are just added to the segments. Uh, so you see them here, um, and we can click on this to go ahead and add a badge. So we've chosen uh, a leaf symbol and a name and the colors and that kind of thing. So these badges just are a visual indicator on people and organization profiles. Um, instead of tags, so tags are things that we add uh, deliberately. It's a binary choice. We have this tag or we don't, whereas these badges are based on people's inclusion in a segment. So it's dynamic. It's based on criteria, any number of criteria that you choose to set up. And we have one more segment to look at here. Because we also connected our funders, um, and because these projects have participants, or the events within these projects have participants, what we've been able to do is find all of the events that were in those projects, and then we found all the participants that were in those events. And when we have a look at the list here, we can see all of these people, and we can see useful uh, information that we've collected about these people as well. So in this case, uh, protected characteristics such, such as gender and ethnicity, and also what we call occurrences, or in the context of um, events, we can think of these as engagements. These are the number of engagements we've had with people uh, during this period. Okay, so I hope that that was a really useful glimpse at uh, GoodCRM and, and what it can do. Um, and if anybody would like to have a, a more extended and personalised one-to-one -one demo, do please head over to goodcrm.co.uk forward slash demo. Okay, I will hand back over to Phil. Uh, thank you very much for that, Tom. It was really good to have a, have a look around the system. Thank you for giving us a, a brief look around and uh, a few of the features of C Good CRM there. Um, we have had some questions come in whilst you've been talking. Um, so I think um, I'm actually going to start um, as you're just on the system, um, it, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to do this, but Caroline just asked um, if you might be able to drill down into um, a funder record to show us how, for example, an application process is captured. Is that something? Okay, so I haven't got, um, I have just set this up for the demo today, so there was no personal data in and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm not going to be able to drill down uh, per se, but um, we can, you know, again, capture any attributes we want to on the funder profiles themselves. And then what we have within the CRM is a thing called record forms, which is really flexible. And that allows us to build um, any kind of uh, process forms that we might want to include. So we could include links to organizations that we are uh, applying for funding from, or we could include people, key contacts that we're speaking to there, the amounts that we are uh, looking to fundraise, status of those types of things and so on. So um, what I'd say as well is we, we do one-to-one uh, -one demos and you can look in at goodcrm.co.uk forward slash demo uh, and I'll be happy to show you around that kind of thing. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, Jackie asks, um, how do the costs compare to other CRM systems? And um, she's particularly interested in Kiwi, if you're familiar with that one. I'm not familiar with Kiwi, that one's not come up before. Um, what I would say is that we try and be as cost effective as possible. Um, we don't spend our time benchmarking particularly uh, and probably feel you're maybe in a better position to uh, understand the comparison there, but um, we try and be as affordable as possible. Yes, I mean, I, I would agree from the research I've done, um, good CRM tends to, to be on the more reasonable end of, of the CRMs. And um, certainly, certainly when you compare it to some of the, the bigger kind of like uh, ones which are more generalist across different uh, kind of like different sectors. Yeah, we don't, um, you know, we don't charge for transaction fees on donations and things like that. And um, our suppliers do go carpets and strike, but we don't add any additions on. So we try and make it a very clear, transparent price with, with no uh, hidden fees. Super. Um, another question here, for this one's from Caris. Um, she asks, is there any difference between user types for people in the organization accessing the CRM? For example, full users or view only users? Um, so if someone only wants to uh, kind of like see data in the CRM, do they need a full user license? Yeah, okay, that's a really good question. Um, there are a couple of things I'll say around user licenses, but um, we don't have at the moment a kind of fully granular system where you can say we're going to create a role for this person and they can only access this bit and that bit and not the other bit. It is fairly binary access to the system. That said, there are lots of, uh, uh, 
I suppose, are exceptions to that. So we do support tutor logins for um, participatory sessions, for example, and we do have the underlying infrastructure to create limited logins, but it's done more on a, a bespoke basis at the moment. So it's all possible. And um, the other thing to say is that um, perhaps you have full-time equivalent staff in, and so you have part-timers. Um, we work in numbers of seats, so everyone can have their own user login, but you only need to pay for the number of licenses you're going to use concurrently. You can swap people in and out of those licenses very easily and keep all of their uh, audit trail and track uh, track record. Super. Um, Heather has asked, um, do you have any customers who use a system for programming events across multiple venues? Yes, absolutely. And um, I think it's worth saying we're not an event management uh, platform ourselves. We do uh, integrate with the likes of Eventbrite Ticket Source, and we do have um, bespoke workflows we can use for uh, more complex enrollments onto events and things like that. But absolutely, we work with lots of touring theatres, for example, who uh, will run um, you know, at different venues at different times and have multiple shows or participatory sessions in, in various different sections and, and uh, locations. Great. Um, Nick's asked, um, how does Good to have it integrate with other best in class tools and platform pla tools or platforms like MailChimp, Google Apps, etc.? Um, he's had experience of CRM tools where they fell down in integrations. Um, yeah, really good question. So we uh, we want to do more with integration. We do integrate with, um, as I say, uh, Eventbrite ticket source, Mailchimp as well. Um, so we will pull uh, you know any contacts that sign up to your Mailchimp list into Good to and automatically add uh, a record of those communications onto uh, people's timelines, that kind of thing. And um, we don't specifically integrate with um, G Suite or Google uh, at the moment, but we do have email capture so you can copy in the CRM from any platform um, and, and record that into that organizational memory, uh, create the contacts, uh, store the attachments and so on and so forth. So we do have lots of ways to integrate uh, uh, across many platforms. Super, and Caroline's asked, um, do you have any insights into how the CRM system might work um, as or with a financial management tool? Yep, yeah, um, so there are a few things we can do with that. So one thing we can look at, if we're talking about you know, bookkeeping, things like zero, that kind of thing, um, we can look at integrations in that sphere, uh, but also we can do things with workflows where we might create um, tasks for somebody in finance when something happens or give them an interface to verify. Maybe you're working with freelancers who are sending invoices and you need a way to cross-check that against the system. Those are the kinds of things we can support. Um, again, getting into specifics for what your organization needs, we can absolutely uh, discuss that over a one-to-one -one venue. Great. Um, and the Institute of Imagination has asked, um, can the CRO handle donations directly um, and tickets as well, or does it just integrate with other systems? I mean, you mentioned Eventbrite already, but um, I suppose if you could dive on that, donations. Yep, so we don't do, uh, uh, Ticketing out of the box at the moment, and um, we, we delegate that to those other platforms uh, at the moment. Although it, you know it's not a big jump for us to build that into a workflow for people. Um, in terms of donations, yes, we accept those uh, directly into the system. We integrate with GoCardless for direct debits and Stripe for card payments. But everything we do is through the CRM. So those contacts, uh, those donors become your contacts. They're tagged as donors. Um, you get gift aid declarations with reporting. Um, again, we don't charge any transaction fees on top of what those third parties charge you either. Great, lovely. Well, I think that's all the questions we've had come in, and that's almost perfect timing because um, it is just about time that we need to be wrapping up. Um, so, um, before we sign off, um, Rose is about to share a poll, and um, it's about to pop up on everyone's screen. Um, so we'd be really grateful if people could fill in that poll. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the first of these tech platform demos that we've uh, presented as the uh, DCN. And so we want to make sure they're really useful for our, our users. Um, we'd also value any other feedback. Um, so Rose is going to be sharing our email address um, in the chat. So if anyone wants to drop us a line, you can. Um, I think. Um, 
So before I go today, um, thank you very much, Tom, for joining us um, and showing us around Good CRM. It has been a pleasure. Um, thank you. Um, you can get in touch with um, Good CRM um, via the links that Rose is about to share in the chat. Um, and equally, as ever, you can get in touch with the Digital Culture Network for free one-to-one -one support um, through our website. Um, as you will probably gather, I am more than happy to um, chat about all things CRM. Um, so do feel free to get in touch if you want um, a further discussion. Um, so I think that is everything for today. So again, thank you very much for joining us, Tom. And thanks everyone at home for joining us as well. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thanks everybody.